What's up, can amigos? Welcome to Dr. Budswell's Canaland. Today in Canaland, we're going to go over recycled organic living soil and how I take, remake, and reamend my soil for future use. Um, it's going to start by taking all these pots and cleaning them out. So, you know, cutting stalks, removing mulch. Mulch is an important part of the growing process. It helps keep uh, moisture all in that top layer where a lot of the magic is happening. So it's important to have that. So I just pull it off and put it back on as needed. We'll take like four or five of these fabric pot, five gallon pots, dump them in here. We'll mix in a bag of worm castings and you know, several cups of amendments. And as I pour them, we'll kind of go over what other options you might have uh, in place of some of the amendments that I'm using if you choose to do it that way. The containers you see me here using have been sitting out for probably four or five months. I'm in no hurry to recycle the soil. Once I'm done, I just cut the plant down, leave the pot sit, and when I'm ready to remake soil, I'll remake soil. So that's what you're seeing here is some very old pots that have been sitting for a while. The roots will break up easily. Uh, all of the chunks will break up very easy while we're doing this. So now it's time to chop them all up. Then I just take a flat, uh, flat face shovel and go ahead and break all the chunks up, get them the best I can. Then I'll get down there on my hands and knees and start breaking up the rest uh, the best I can with my gloves on. But as you can see here, it all breaks up very easy. It's dusty. Put a dust mask on. Uh, you know, that's my best advice I can give to you. Wear a dust mask. You don't want to be breathing in all these particles. Just because it's organic doesn't mean it's great for you to inhale. So keep that in mind. We'll remove any huge root balls out of here, which there's not going to be many because they've been sitting for so long. The rest of the remaining root is fine to stay in this mix because as the microorganisms break down the amendments we're going to add, it's going to break down those roots too into available nutrients for the plants to uptake. So here we're just going to break up all the clumps, get a nice smooth consistency there, and we're good to go. I think coming up here in just a second, we'll see a root ball. Um, yeah, there you go. Big chunk of roots, we'll just throw it in there and that's okay. And any bit of stem that we might find just from that remaining stalk, like you'll see here, we'll just discard. So I discarded all of that and we're gonna move on to the next part, which is gonna be adding these amendments. Be right back, can amigos. Okay, so here we have some verma blend, verma compost. Um, which is a pretty kick-ass product. I like it. It's, it's one cubic foot that we're using here. We're just going to dump that in here. Um, we're also going to take and mix that in there very well. Get it turned over nicely. Don't skip on the mixing part. This is going to be the basis of having a, a well-balanced soil. So get in there, mix it up. For the sake of this video, I kind of skip ahead a little bit. We're going to add some additional perlite here for aeration. Um, over time, the perlite becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and it kind of seems to disappear from the soil. And so I just add more in, mix it in, so we got plenty of drainage in there. And once again, mix it all up, just so it looks like that. That, that looks great right there. Then we're gonna start with a cup of neem. I'm gonna sprinkle a cup of neem over here. I think I'm gonna actually do two cups of neem. Um, yeah, there's the second cup of neem. Um, neem is gonna be, heavy in uh, nitrogen and also a bunch of trace minerals and so that's going to be my base two cups of neem i'm going to put in a cup of feather meal feather meal has some long lasting nitrogen it's slow release fertilizer so it should feed the plant for you know the entire cycle until the end then we're going to take and we're going to add some high phosphorus bat guano um, now bat guano has been debated by a lot of people for its use as a sustainable item. I'm not here to argue that. That's just an amendment that I use. I try to create the most diverse soil I can. So we put a cup of that in there and then we're gonna go find another phosphorus source here. And although I'm not showing it, this is gonna be bone meal. Typically I use fish bone meal, but I didn't have any fish bone meal on hand. So I had to go with regular bone meal. There you see, a spoma bone meal. And then my final nutrient source is a cup of rock phosphate. And that's what that is. There's a couple chunks in there. So you see me breaking some up, you know, with my hands, but that's three separate phosphate uh, inputs. 
in my opinion, the most diverse soil is the best soil. So as many sources as I can find of nitrogen, uh, of potassium, of phosphorus, you know, whatever, whatever I can do. Currently on hand, I just had some neem and some feather meal. Um, you could put alfalfa meal, blood meal, you know, with your phosphorus, you can use fish bone meal, you can use bone meal, you can use rock phosphate, you can use uh, um, bat guanos. For potassium, you know, generally I just stick with the tried and true kelp. Kelp is a natural PGR plant growth regulator. Um, in my opinion, it promotes heavy, heavy flowers, and I think that you should never skimp on the kelp meal. So here you see me adding the first cup of kelp meal. I'll usually go heavy on my kelp meal, probably two or three cups of that, um, more than any other single amendment, I guess, in my use. You could also use green sand um, to help with your potassium, but in my experience, green sand does take a long time to release its uh, nutrients and make them available to the plant, usually over a year or more, but it'll be good for your recycled organic living soil in the long haul if you do use it. So just keep that in mind. Same with rock phosphorus. Um, here you're going to see me with an all-purpose uh, chicken fertilizer amendment and I use it's pelletized and I don't typically care for pelletized but it's again it's what I had on hand so that's what I'm going to use. A good general rule of thumb when you're mixing your soil is three cups of organic amendments per cubic foot of soil. So here I was making like four cubic feet of soil so I used a total of 12 amendments and that's what you know maybe a little added for extra measure. Here you see a cup I'm going to throw in a cup of insect frass which is insect poop um, it's very good. It has a lot of chitin in it, which is a good thing. And then here I'm just going to top it off with a little yucca extract. Um, the yucca extract is going to help um, hold moisture or help the water wet the soil, a surfactant of sorts. Um, and that's what you see me sprinkling in here. And then once again, mix good, mix thoroughly, don't skimp. It's going to be the base for your well-balanced soil mix again. Then once you got this all mixed thoroughly, you just want to add it to a container. Um, I usually put it in Rubbermaid tubs or I'll put it in 33 gallon trash bins and make sure to wet it down real good with water or compost tea or something along those lines and uh, let it sit and break down for about two months before use. And if you do that, you're going to have a badass soil, Kenamigos. That's it for now. Peace.